You're listening to Leaders Unedited with Keo, a monthly podcast where your host and Keo CEO, Margaret Mansfield, sits down with inspiring leaders making waves in Australia and beyond. Welcome to this episode of Leaders Unedited. I'm your host, Margaret Mansfield, and I'm delighted to have you with us, Professor Shirley Bowen. I'll call you Professor once and then we'll, we'll go to Shirley if that's okay with you. That's great. Thank you, Margaret. It's great to be here. Fantastic. Thank you. So currently CEO of St John of God Hospital in Subiaco, but you've had a a really interesting career starting with um, Chief Medical Officer, I think, for the ACT. So that's really interested given the times we are in now. But you've been a dean at the School of Medicine Mm. for University of Notre Dame. You've worked in public and private uh, settings and now the CEO of St John of God. So how have these various roles mm-hmm. prepared you for the role you are in now? So I have had a very mm. different eclectic career and as a doctor and, and I first you know, I did medicine very much with the intention of just being somebody's doctor and uh, I fell into infectious diseases and had a really interesting first 10 years of my career in medicine and public health and then I became chief health officer and I think that gave me a real taste Mm. for doing things where leadership and management was important. It's very different to being somebody's doctor to looking Mm. at the whole population and yes it's it's been a varied career and I think for today in COVID times um, having had that experience and that background Mm. has been really helpful to me because COVID times are challenging. Mm. There's a lot of change. And then, of course, I'm running a very big hospital at the Mm. same time with a big transformation piece happening. So I think all that background and experience in managing and leading has been very helpful to me Mm. and given me a sense of calm sometimes when otherwise perhaps I might have been a little bit more concerned. Yeah, well, given that uh, background in infectious diseases, I would say you're very well prepared <laughs> to lead the organisation. But I'm really interested in how you think COVID is changing the whole face of healthcare mm. and what you are doing to prepare the organisation you lead for that. Mm. So COVID, we, we all know it, it's, you know, it's a, it's a threat to individual people, it's a threat to organisations mm. economically. So for healthcare, it really has forced us to go back to the basics. And it is like when TB first became a major Mm. threat or plague or smallpox, the various epidemics of the past. So it's forcing healthcare to go back to the basics about what's important, which is, you know, the things you know about, hand hygiene, fresh air, um, physical distancing, the real basics and mask wearing are the things that will protect Mm. us going forward. But I think it has made everyone think about sustainability for healthcare. It's made every healthcare worker really think, do I want to be here? Am I really up for this? And if anything, I would say that is the big aha piece for me as a healthcare leader for these times. I'm someone who has always believed that there's a certain calling into medicine or nursing into a health profession Mm. It's a very old-fashioned term, not something some, some have often said to me, what do you mean called? But you have to feel it here. You have mm. to want to care for people. You have to want to make them better. And you actually, to some extent, need to understand that you might be putting yourselves at risk or yourself at risk in order to do that. Mm. And I think COVID brings all of that to the front and it asks every healthcare worker, are you up for this? Can you stay the long haul? Because it's hard work, really hard work. And I think that's my moment of challenging um, traditional views of why we work in hospitals and what the job is, that to go forward, we really have to help each each nurse, each doctor, each physio, each every Mm. healthcare professional ask themselves that question, are you ready for this? Are you resilient? And if you're not, how can we help build your resilience? to make you able to come to work relentlessly every day for the next few years because I'd like to think COVID Mm. times were on the wane. 
but I don't quite see the end right. yet. But the end will come, that I'm very positive about, because every pandemic comes to an end. Mm. But I'm not quite sure when that will be. So I think, yeah, resilience and that's the, that's the challenge. What have we got? What is our purpose to help us manage through these difficult times? It's interesting you say that because a lot of the work I do in corporate organisations, there's also a lot of focus on meaningful work, finding my purpose, obviously much mm -hmm. more amplified in healthcare because people put themselves at risk more so now every day. Um, but in terms of your role as a leader, do you, do you find you have to put that calling to one side or is it still part of being a leader of a healthcare organisation? Because you're doing a, a different type of work. So where does that mm -hmm. sit with you personally? So for me personally, this, this, is, this is all about me. I have to have purpose and passion and it's been the same thing from the, the moment I opened my mouth and said I wanted to be a doctor as a mm. child that I feel deeply connected to caring for people as patients, as people wanting their lives to be better mm. and as a leader, for me leading the hospital, I want to impart that vision and purpose to every single caregiver as we call them in St John mm -hmm. of God. And, and in Subiaco and each of our hospitals, that they can see that I believe in that purpose. I believe that looking after our patients or our clients is the most important thing and that I want them to, to feel it and see it and touch it and come with me on that journey. So I think, you know, every manager, every executive, but particularly the CEO of a big organisation in a difficult time, for me, that imparting that passion for patient care and experience is really, really important. And I have to say in COVID times for me as well, as I will say, I come to work every day because I cannot expect any of my staff to turn up if I'm not prepared to do the same. So I feel as CEOs of hospitals um, that you need to have that same belief that you're expecting your, you know, your nurses to, to have every day very important to me. And I love, I wanted to go back to what you said about the changing face of healthcare and it's going back to the basics, you know, hand hygiene, masks. I think nowadays we get so caught up in technology mm -hmm. and, you know, leaders need to be, um, you know, brilliant with technology and, and lead digital transformations. But is there something to be said about going back to the basics of leadership? I think the basics of leadership, uh, the basics for, for, you know, in hospitals, mm. the basics of having a therapeutic relationship with your patient is mm. absolutely the same today as it was 300 years ago, 100 years mm. ago. It's all about that. But as a leader, we always have to go back to basics with everything we do. We need to be visible, be touchable, communicate well, be authentic. And I do find that now more than ever, those things are very important, but they're always important. Mm. They are the basics. I think some of the great leaders of our lifetime will say, you know, they went and they walked on the factory floor and they understood the process mm. and they talked to people about what was bothering them. And that translates into every industry. Mm. And I think now, as always, it's very important. So is that something you do? You spend a lot of time with staff I'd like to spend more time. <laughs> okay. I think every CEO yes. says that, don't mm. they? But I do, I have done the whole time I've been at, mm. at St John of God Subiaco. I have been out every day. I am on the floor talking particularly to our nurses, hearing from them how their day is going, what their pressure points are, trying to communicate messages. So I do, I try and get out every day. And uh, the wardens will always say to me, oh, we haven't seen you. Where are you? What's happening? I say I've been stuck doing COVID policy or running meetings or other things. But I, I think that visibility is important. I also think for me personally, it's not about aloof leadership either. I, I am very relational in my style. Mm -hmm. I do chat. I enjoy chatting and hearing about people's families and um, what's going on with them. And I, I think it's very, very important um, Many, many years ago, a very good CEO from a hospital in New South Wales who I knew when I was much younger, he said to me that 
he had made it his business to know the name of names of everybody in what was then a very large hospital, which I can't believe. I mean, I can believe he tried. It's a, it's a big job. But also to know the names of the cleaners and the staff who take the waste out and the catering staff. Mm. You need to know everybody personally and I've always made it my business and I've always sort of that little note in there that, you know, who keeps the hospital mm. clean? It's as important as the doctor who's treating a patient because an unclean hospital is an unsafe hospital. So very important to be personal, mm. relational and understand what's going on. And it is through those conversations you do pick up, oh, we've got a process issue here. Mm. Uh, you know, that, that's clearly not working. It's no wonder they can't do their job properly and try and, you know, innovate through that. I was uh, very excited to read that you've got uh, more women than men on your leadership team uh, and, a, and a large female workforce. But tell me a little bit about how you, it's still largely a male-dominated industry, particularly mm. as you get to the more senior roles. How did you build, you know, a, a, a female, you know, biased leadership team? Yeah. So, as always, it's an mm. unconscious bias, actually, mm. I think. Um I think female leaders can attract other female leaders because hopefully you do run a workplace where you are cognizant that mm. a woman in the workplace is a woman with very likely a family and some responsibilities. And I don't mean by that necessarily children, partners, elderly, parents, etc. So I, I do put that right out there that every executive, I recognise that they, they have a family and family must always come first. So maybe that's part of it. Mm. Um, but I, I, when I set out to recruit, I set out to recruit the very best person and that's hopefully regardless of gender or race or anything, uh, ethnicity, other, you know, other issues. So I, it, it, it probably is an unconscious bias, but I am very pleased that my Director of Medical Services is also a woman and our Director of Nursing is a woman. That's not uncommon because the nursing profession is very feminised. Um, but I'm certainly always, you know, gender is not, is not a bias that I'm aware of, but perhaps I do as I say, have an unconscious bias. But I do put family as really an important part of who we are. Mm -hmm and that we're able to bring our whole selves to work and not some other half self, as it mm. often is. So perhaps a, a not so secret ingredient anymore in terms of improving female diversity in the workplace. Yes. Um, I noticed on your emails, Shirley, you had a transformation is coming with a cute little picture. Yes. Um, <laughs> tell me about, I know there's a big redevelopment, but, you know, you speak of transformation. So what are you trying to transform mm -hmm. and, and transform to what? And, and it's a great question, Mo, mm. because building a new building doesn't mean you transform mm. a hospital. Mm. Our buildings are just buildings. So we hope that the big new building is part of a transformation journey where we're creating and bringing new ways of delivering patient care into the hospital. As part of it, we do hope to bring in more digitised virtual care supports, uh, so, you know, being able to do blood pressures remotely or monitoring people more remotely in a, in a telehealth sense. Uh, we're hoping that we'll be able to offer aftercare to people by checking in on them by telehealth and mm -hmm. similar. I, I suppose it's not so avant-garde in a way, mm -hmm. but we do hope to bring that into Subiaco's remit and we haven't done that type of care before. Mm -hmm. The other thing is we will, uh, as part of our service offering, have an emergency department, again, a service offering that we haven't been able to offer before and that will be exciting to make sure that we can offer 24-7 care to our patients. We have very, we have very big oncology, cancer, patient, outpatient area and uh, I certainly want to be able to look after those patients in a more holistic way. So our transformation is about a building but it's really about saying we're offering a next level of care and patient experience, hopefully, going forward. We will introduce room service as well as part of that change up, which will be, as I say, more like a hospital in a hotel. So that's, that's sort of the word mm -hmm. I 
I like to use or the phrase a hospital in a hotel. And what does that mean for your leadership then? What mm. needs to change or shift as far as leading this organisation? Because it's a very different model of care and delivery that, you, that you're talking about here. It does mean that each of us as an executive team has to be open to thinking in a different way and taking the best models of care and ways of doing things that we can from all over the world and bringing that together. So I have a, have a very good director of nursing who is always thinking in new ways and it's really helpful for the whole team because she's always saying, well, is there another way to do that? Is that the best way? And I think as a team that's something that we're trying to bring together by saying, well, we've always done it that way. Can we do it a different way? Is there a better way? So as a team, we have to be open to that, um, that level of, of new idea. Mm. In fact, our board chair, uh, Honourable Kerry Sanderson, she's pivotal in that because she's mm. always asking, mm. is, it, is there another way to do that and have you looked here and, and asking questions. So I think that's really got us on our journey really well. So leading more of that innovative thinking and encouraging people to come up with new ideas is going to be really important mm. for you going forward. Because you can just be complacent, can't you, mm. and just do what you've always done. Mm. And, and Sir John of God Sibiaco is a very traditional hospital with a massive history. So that's why I always say, well, how do we create a hospital of the future and not the past? And that's something as a team we... We're really trying to say, okay, hospital of the future, what does it actually mean mm. and how are we different? So mm. it's an exciting time. Yeah, I look forward to seeing it unfold. Now my final question is if you were to offer a few words of advice to your younger self with all your accumulated experience right mm. now, what would that advice be? I think definitely my advice to myself would be don't be in such a hurry. I, I have always through my career loved a challenge, mm -hmm. so I do tend to grab onto a challenge and I think there are times I should have just sat with the challenges I already had and not gone for the next thing. So I'm, I think it would be to take some more time and also to recognise something that I didn't actually recognise fully, which is there is some wisdom that comes with age. Now, it might actually be experience, but the two seem to come together mm. and, and I look back and I think, mm, had I just been a little bit more wise and calm, then things would have been a little bit easier sometimes. Mm. So I think that's, I could say to myself in the past, you know, for example, I, I was Director of Communicable mm. Diseases here in WA. It's just a, a super job, just a wonderful job. Mm. And at the time, I probably, well, I didn't see what a great role it really was. And um, so I'd say, in, you know, with respect, just take a little bit more time before you jump to the next exciting thing. Mm. That's great advice for any leader. Thank you so much, Shirley, and thank you for talking to us today. Really appreciate it. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, Margaret.